Let's get you up and running with Hitch to Our Graphics version two. I have the application downloaded and installed on my PC here, and I wanna open up my project, this graphics project here. I'll open up a few windows to get going with Hitch to Our Graphics. First up, I'll open the control window, clicking here, and I can see my rundown. I have all my graphics right here. Let's just move that out of the way for a second, and then take a look back at the launcher again, and I'll open up two more windows. One is the output, so this is where all the graphics will appear. And the other is a preview for that output. And uh, I can test some things, make sure they look okay before I bring them on air. I'll just set that there, move my launcher out of the way, and then rearrange my windows just a little bit. So on the left-hand side, I have my control window for the rundown, showing graphics, hiding graphics, and editing graphics. And then on the other side, I have my preview window, and then I have my output. From here over on the rundown, I can click on any of these graphics and they will show up on my output and my preview. I can also click it again to hide it. I can also click on several graphics to show them all at the same time. So when you click on a graphic on the rundown, it shows it on the output and on the preview at the same time. But another way to make sure that you're going live with the right graphic and it's gonna appear in the right place is to click on the status icon on the left. You'll see here as I click it on and off that it shows up on my preview window of where it's gonna show up whenever I show that graphic. You'll also notice this run button is now highlighted, so I can click on that, and on the output, you can see it shows up and runs on air. I can do the opposite of that, click on the status indicator again, click run, and now it goes off air. This is perfect for showing lots of graphics at the same time. So let's say I wanna queue up both of these lower thirds and this message all to come on air at the same time. I can click on the status, have them queued, and then click run, and they all show up at the same time. I'll just take those off air again and then move on to adding my own graphics. So right now you'll notice that the rundown is actually locked, but I can always edit it by clicking on the edit button. Now it goes into edit mode and I can do a lot more things with it. Some of the things I can do is rearrange the graphics so they show up where I want them to be. I can delete the graphics. I can edit any one of them. For example, this lower third here. I might want to say John Barker here to record instead. And I can say done on that. And now when I show that graphic, you'll see it says John Barker here to record instead. I can add new graphics by clicking on the plus icon at the top here and choosing the type of graphic that I want to add. So for example, I'll add another message graphic and here you can see it pops up so I can edit the content. Let's just say, hello world. And from there, I can choose what it says, but also some of the theming and positioning options. We'll come back to theming later, but for now let's show the graphic on air and then open the positioning options and I can choose where on the screen that graphic should be positioned. So let's do just in the middle. I can also change the scale of the graphic all the way up to 200% or down to 1%. So it's tiny, tiny on the screen. Let's make it back to 100%. I can also choose some offset here for X and Y if I really want to decide where that graphic should live, but I'll put it back to 0% and 0%. And let's click done just to hide that out of the way. Once my rundown is looking basically the way I want it to look, I can go ahead and lock it again. And now I can't make any edits to the rundown. I can only show and hide graphics. Next, let's take a look at themes. So if I open up the theme editor, I've got two things here on the screen. One is a preview of what my theme is gonna look like. And the other is the styles that I want to change in that theme. So for example, here I have the hitch to our orange project default theme. I can make any changes to that in here, or I can change over to my gray theme so I can see what that looks like. All of the default graphics in Hitch2R Graphics version two are made up of large text and small text elements. So I can change any of the settings for those in the either large text or the small text section. For example, here in large text, I might wanna change the large text for all of the elements to be huge or tiny. Let's just go for 6XL. I might want all the large text to be bold. And I might want the color of that large text to be, uh, let's see, uh, dark red. Looks great, right? And then in the small text, I might want it to be a slightly darker red. I might also want it to be a little bit bigger than that, 3XL. And I want the small text to be italic. And I know you can't really see things quite well just yet, but we'll change that in a second. Down here in the background section, I'm choosing what it looks like behind each of these elements. So for example, the color, let's go for something a little bit more along the white line. I can choose how rounded I want the corners to be. Somewhere around medium works for me. Some padding, how much space do I want within that element on the left and right. 
and on the top and bottom. That will do for now. And then I want to go to the border section here and I can choose where on the screen I want a border to be. So let's put a border all the way around. Let's make it quite a thin border. And then let's try to match that dark red color of the H2. I think somewhere around there will work just fine. What I can also do if I prefer is to go back into the background section and instead of a color, I can write the word transparent. And now you can see that there's no background at all there. I think I prefer to have a color and maybe I'll just push it in the, oh, I don't know, somewhere over here in the just off red white area. I can also choose some things like the position on screen, like how much uh, margin should be around the elements, pushing them away from the edge of the screen or towards the edge of the screen. I do prefer just to be a little bit away there. And then finally, I can choose what transition these elements should come on screen with. I quite like the slide, so I'll stick with that. I can also choose the global font that will be used across all of the graphics in this theme. Now, if I go back to my rundown, move this out of the way, you'll see as I bring a graphic on air that it doesn't look like that theme that I just created. And that's because if I go back to theme again, you'll see that the project default is actually H2R Orange. And what I can do is go back into H2R Gray, set that as the default. And then as I move this out of the way, you can see the graphics now have that default theme. And this is very useful if you want to set up a project, make a change, and then change all of your graphics. But another way to do it is to change my theme back to this orange default. And you'll see that my lower thirds go back to orange. I can go into my rundown and let's just show two lower thirds at the same time. If I edit each one of these graphics, in fact, a quick way to do that is to right click on the graphic, click edit. I can go into this theme section here and by default, it will use that default project theme. But for this specific graphic, I can choose to set a theme override to be H2R gray. It's not very well named now because I changed it to red, but you get the gist. And now all of my graphics will show up as the default theme, except for that one graphic that I chose to override on the uh, H2R gray theme. This can be very useful if you want full control over how each graphic looks. You could set a custom theme for each graphic and make it look exactly the way you want it. Next up, let's take a look in the media tab. And this is where I'll add things like images for my graphics. So in here, I'll go and uh, add a new image and then I'll just add this thumbnail I have for one of my latest YouTube live streams. You can see it there. And now back over in the rundown, if I edit, or actually I'll just add my own new image graphic here and you'll see it pops up and I can choose what image I want to use. Now by default, I've just shipped this blurred out background image. So you have something as a reference, but I can choose in my images here, the brainstorm episode one, and I can have a little preview of that right here. And when I click on that, it shows up on the screen. I can also position that image wherever I want it on screen. So let's say I'll just pull down the scale, move it off to the side, to the top a little. And I can use that for a logo bug maybe on the top. I can't see why I'd use this particular image, but if I threw my here to record logo in there, I could have that on the top of my screen as a little bug. Now there's lots more videos coming out on how to get the most out of HStore Graphics version 2, but for now that'll get you going. Let me know if you have any issues or comments. If you have any questions, be sure to visit the docs. You can always do that on the launcher page, or you can also report an issue and that'll bring you to the website, or you can tell me what went wrong and we'll try to fix it from there. Okay, thanks for watching.